Welcome to our fifth and final session of our study on regenerating the spirit of democracy. Uh, happy to be with you once again. Let's get to it. Let's first start with a summary of where we've been, I think, the first four weeks. Uh, the culture is soil, as a metaphor. Uh, three growers which want to uh, use the soil uh, to be hospitable for their projects are capitalism, various religions, and democratic civil society, though we look most, I think, in terms of religions as something of what the Christian right has been planting in our and, and cultivating our soil. Um, each grower wants to grow their own stories, their sense of belonging, their sense of moral order and empowerment for um, overcoming whatever obstacles we have. Each of these three growers has a spirituality that shapes the way uh, we think of and, and what we the people means. The historical weakness of the value of equality as compared to the value of freedom, especially freedom for a segment of white men, imperils American democracy as well as the integrity of Christianity. That's what I pretty much laid out in that first session and then we've been unpacking in the last uh, several sessions. And the marks of a healthy democracy are evident or not, and I think have their champions among we the people most of the evidences for democracy being healthy are in fact, I think, rooted in culture in us. From culture then comes policy and who we choose as leaders and what we put up with and what we don't. Uh, so a lot of what we've been doing in this course, and in fact what I want to do with the Center for Religion and Public Life is to examine and uh, raise questions and at times propose alternatives to uh, what I consider to be the cultural process, which is up processes, which are upstream of elections and policy and the like. Uh, upstream meaning uh, it's out of that soil of that culture that the rest of this stuff emerges. And if we're not liking what we're getting downriver, look up at the culture. That's what we've been trying to do here over these last several weeks. So this is what I'm doing today. Uh, what do people of faith already know or have we known or could know again that could help regenerate the spirit of democracy in the U.S.? I've got 24, uh, 24 examples that came out of my imagination regarding ways that I think people of faith uh, could contribute to the regeneration of the soil of democracy in this country, the spirit of democracy in this country. Um, but um, it's, I'm not saying that, oh, all faith communities are really strong in all these 24. No, but based on what we believe, on what we know, and somewhat what we either do know or have known what to do, uh, these are my recommendations. What do we have to offer to improve the soil for the kind of democracy the U.S. needs today. Not the democracy that was uh, required in the 1950s or we were capable of in the 1950s. Not the democracy, frankly, of at the time of the uh, ratification of the Constitution in 1787. Um, not at the time of the re-ratification in some ways as to what came out of the Civil War and the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendments. Uh, no, this is... a we have a different country moving forward than the one we've had. What's the democracy that's necessary for today? Um, warning, the following again is going to come across as soft, I think, because it's because we're talking about culture. But on the contrary, I think every therefore related to the proposals, uh, to these 24 proposals I'm going to make, uh, is in fact, uh, represents hard work, uh, a great deal of hard work. Because changing culture is, is um, maybe almost as difficult as changing one's own mind. And we know how difficult that is. All right, here, let's get into it. And each of these I've started with uh, what, what I think we know or have known as people of faith, and then uh, how that might contribute to a, or, or a, a, a parallel component, uh, in a, a component with affinity, uh, to use the phrase we used a few weeks ago, um, uh, with the democracy we need. So that's what I'm trying to do, is look at the affinities between what I, people of faith have either claimed to know, have known, 
might know uh, and, uh, and what our democracy may mean. People of faith know there's something, someone greater than ourselves and greater than any nation. I love uh, one of the uh, reasons I've heard uh, for why Muslims pray five times a day, because human beings are forgetful that there is a God and we are not. Um, so a fitting spirit of democracy would recognize that we the people are not the greatest power on earth. Uh, there is a power greater than ourselves um, and the golden calf created uh, here in the picture. Um, people of faith know the universe is creation and not simply nature. I love this picture from the Hubble telescope, which they call the pillars of creation because this, the, this is the uh, stars being born out of stardust. It's just, it's, it's, for me, it's an awe-inspiring picture. A fitting spirit of democracy will consider resource usage, uh, therefore, as a creation, as uh, more of I thou and not simply I it. Uh, these are terms that come out of uh, the late Jewish philosopher Martin Buber, uh, who talked about some relationships we have are with uh, things and some relationships we have are more personal. Um, and I think the, the challenge is to think more in terms of I thou relationships with things that we perhaps we've thought of as things such as the planet's resources and the soil itself. Uh, we care differently about one that is an I you and I thou relationship than it's an it and I can use it as I please. Love this picture. Um, people of faith interpret and keep high the importance of mystery, awe, and wonder, which is one of the consequences of knowing that we are creatures and not uh, ourselves the creator. A fitting spirit of democracy recognizes no human being or nation is ultimate, the ultimate one God, nor can everything be possessed, controlled, or owned. Um, I'm leaning on the cover of uh, Kansas's uh, album uh, and their song Dust in the Wind here. Uh, which, of course, is based on the story out of, uh, out of Genesis, uh, from dust we are and to dust we shall return. People of faith know human beings are creatures and part of the living planet. We are groundlings, literally, uh, the way that the Hebrew has it, uh, made from the earth, of the earth, earthlings. Uh, a fitting spirit of democracy is not afraid to talk about limits. Uh, I think it's quite contrary to where we've been. The planet is created for all living beings, not simply for humans or for Americans. Uh, go back to the Robin Wall Kimmerer uh, line about uh, uh, Native American elders saying these people came over here, uh, but they act as if they still have one foot on the boat, uh, uh, like they're going to run away after they've used everything up. Very different to think in terms of uh, treating all of creation uh, as something of value. People of faith know human beings are equal before the ultimate. All forms of inequality are human creations um, rather than hierarchically created that God created and, and this created uh, all human beings in, in some kind of order uh, with upper and, and, and lower. A fitting spirit of democracy protects rights and limits the level of inevitable inequalities. It's not to say in a democracy that we could ever have no inequalities, but I think a healthy democracy is going to pay attention to uh, limiting those inequalities, or I'm not sure you can actually hold a democracy. People of faith know human beings are mortal and fallible. Humility is a virtue. A fitting spirit of democracy invites correction. Any form of governance could be improved, will fall short, make mistakes, and need to rectify its mistakes. Um, love the section out of a student's writing here <laughs> uh, uh, that is on the same point. People of faith know life is a gift. Gratitude is a logical stance toward life. A fitting spirit of democracy does not, except in extraordinary times, require persons to give their lives. Give a lot, yes. But given your life, if life is a gift, of course, who's the giver? And democracy, the people themselves are not the giver. 
nor is it absolutely clear in talking this way, and this is really a genuine question, if a democracy should foster gratitude, who or what receives that gratitude? So uh, I, we have uh, Diana Butler Bass's book referred to in the video with her, Grateful. Uh, she explores these kinds of issues. People of faith know how to deal with suffering and death. Uh, at least when we're really our best selves, we do. A fitting spirit of democracy recognizes its, its limited role in addressing finitude and mortality. Um, uh, it's a limited role. It, it can't deal with ultimate meanings, right? It deals with proximate meanings and meanings that are in the um, community commonly together. But a spirit of democracy can foster compassion. Compassion is a word that uh, fundamentally means to be present with those who suffer. Uh, and to not abandon those who are suffering, to, their, to suffer alone, or to suffer with. Um, and we can foster that kind of attitude rather than once one suffering, you're out of the producer or consumer loop uh, and, uh, and we don't know what to do with you. A people of faith know love is more powerful than hate. A religious community can be a leaven of love in society. I almost said just should be a leaven of love in society and leave it at that. But we also know that religious communities can be powerful leavens of hate. A fitting spirit of democracy is loath, I think I should have an E in there, to invoke hate and to suppress love. Because once you invoke hate and start going down the line of we are united by the people we hate, What's the end of that line? Oh, by the way, that was St. Francis embracing the leper as an example of compassion. The Hebrew word for shalom, uh, written in Hebrew. The shalom in Hebrew, right? People of faith know the proper definition of peace as shalom, which is not merely the absence of conflict. It is where there is justice and wholeness. Uh, but that includes an inner dimension and outer dimensions, meaning that there is a wholeness and a peace, a shalom in self, and a wholeness and peace in community and society. Yes, they're interlinked, but you're not going to have peace in one without a foundation also here. A fitting spirit of democracy is not by itself sufficient to form the personal and public centers from which peace with justice is born. Yeah, there is, a, while justice is a word in the Constitution, it is not otherwise defined in the Constitution. So giving content to the word of just, uh, what justice is, um, giving content, and so is domestic tranquility, um, giving, giving life to those words, that's not simply uh, out there in democracy. That needs to be contributed, fostered, cultivated. People of faith know community is essential to develop healthy persons. Uh, go back to um, uh, Aristotle's insight uh, with the Greek word idios. Uh, idios is one uh, like idiot, uh, meaning a person is completely apolitical, not part of a community, is what Aristotle was talking about. Persons, uh, the, the, the lone wolf of humanity. Um, no, community is essential to develop healthy persons. A healthy community develops healthy people. Without healthy communities, you're not going to have healthy people except in, as the exceptions. A fitting spirit of democracy must make and protect an ecology that is friendly towards healthy communities. Again, in a democracy, it's not just there's the state and the individual, at least in our democracy, that's not the case. State and the individual, there are also these mediating communities between the two that are absolutely essential to the way we've gone about things. And we in the religious communities, we know something about that. People of faith know religions end or tell us the trajectory towards which it heads is to connect with the ultimate. And the ends, the, the trajectory of politics is to govern and share power. And these aren't the same. Uh, our agendas should, while there's going to be affinities and overlap, um, when one looks entirely like the other, someone is, something is being significantly left out. A religious agenda should not be identical to a political agenda, and the means to reach an end also differ, whereas in, in uh, 
uh, religious communities, persuasion is what we have to work with. And in political communities, yes, you have persuasion, but you also have means of coercion. Uh, people of faith know healthy, functional human community requires a moral code to develop reciprocity, mutuality, relative equality, and cooperation. I would also say in there maybe to define what brokenness means, which uh, also is a religious term for sin. Uh, something like the golden rule um, uh, and our need to define what it means to be neighbor, how to be neighbor to each other. Uh, we know that from within our faith communities, a fitting spirit of democracy gleans from the nation's religious, moral, and spiritual leaders and communities in order to cobble together a sufficient moral order for the present time. Uh, uh, the, the moral order in democracy is not likely to look exactly like the moral order in any particular faith group, but you're likely to see um, uh, parallels and affinities and mirrors uh, from certain aspects of faith groups and spiritual and moral leadership reflected in uh, the sense of obligations, what we owe to each other. If that isn't the case, then you have to ask, ask who's setting that moral order. And in the U.S., you need to be looking at our economic system, at capitalism as we practiced it. I'm not anti-capitalist, uh, but there are times when the Capitalism has um, intruded in both democratic, our, our, our civic life, as well as our religious life. That's a, a whole nother class. People of faith know the value of tribes and the dangers of tribalism. Love that cartoon. Take a moment to look at it. A fitting spirit of democracy values voluntary association and, at the same time, guards against any tribe trying to become the minority that dominates the majority. Um, tribes, uh, small groups, uh, um, uh, the joys of knowing people and of feeling connected and belonging and the like, um, that's, that's part of human nature. But tribalism is when we take what I believe, what I do, and say, well, that's the only way it should be. That's what everybody needs to do. And if we either will withdraw and do it our own way, or we'll see if we can get a majority or, or the electoral, uh, uh, the reins of power, and we're going to make sure everybody buckles under to what we want to do. People of faith know caring for the poor and vulnerable is a chief or the chief plumb line for defining what justice and morality in society means. And again, that's, that's, uh, it's evident, I would say, in certainly the world's monotheisms, uh, in Christianity, Judaism, Islam, um, and also in a number of other faiths. A fitting spirit of democracy will tolerate only a certain level, again, uh, a conclusion, a similar one earlier, of economic inequality. Uh, otherwise, that democracy is in peril. People of faith know how to build trust and brave spaces for dangerous conversations. I see this happening. There are congregations and, uh, and, and various uh, faith-related organizations trying to do this, and I, I, I commend them. Uh, it's, this is not something that a lot of congregations know well at this point. It's something we could know better. A fitting democracy requires a robust swirl of conversations and arguments. I would also say ability to deal with conflict and, and stay together to at least understand what it really is we're, we're conflicting about. One of my favorite lines from uh, the research around what civil discourse is, is, is that uh, sometimes it's an achievement to achieve, under, uh, to achieve um, uh, 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 disagreement. Uh, to achieve disagreement meaning I actually know why we disagree and both sides can agree on the reasons why they disagree. That these days would be an achievement. People of faith know everyone has a relationship with money. The love of money, says uh, the Bible, and not money itself is the root of all evil. One of my favorite books, Your Money or Your Life, taking that line out of Jack Benny. Uh, and, uh, and a wonderful book, by the way, that asks the fundamental question, uh, this says, says, okay, go in your wallet, 
take out a dollar, assuming you still have any cash in those wallets, uh, since who uses cash anymore, especially during COVID. Um, take some cash out of your wallet, look at it and say, I'm exchanging my life energy for you. How satisfying is that exchange? That's what the whole book is about. And it's, it's, it's really well done. It, uh, from a faith-based point of view, it, is, it asks some profound questions. A fitting spirit of democracy will not allow democracy to be driven by moneyed interests. In other words, people with money are not important, more important, are not more important than people without money. Mm, that's interesting, right? But uh, in a democracy, that ought to be the case. People of faith know how to address the question, how much is enough? Um, I love Brene Brown when she said, the opposite of abundance is not scarcity. The opposite, uh, actually, I'm take that back. What Brene Brown says is the opposite of scarcity is not abundance. The opposite of scarcity is enough. What is enough? Profound spiritual question. I don't know any faith any spiritual perspective other than the prosperity gospel that that uh, uh, tells you it's your job to accumulate more. Every faith perspective is what's is asking what's important in life. What do you treasure, and can we find ways to accumulate less and leave that lighter footprint? A fitting spirit of democracy dances with an ever-improving but not necessarily ever-expanding economy. I've been reading that about 70% of our economy has been consumption-based. Consumption is not a sustainable strategy uh, as it's constantly expanding, or is it an adequate substitute for the pursuit of happiness? People of faith know the need for and practices and rituals uh, of reflection, confession, Penance, repentance, forgiveness. Um, if you go to TED Talks, uh, TED.com, and look up this talk by uh, Alain de Botton, um, uh, it's a really interesting one on how atheists uh, should not throw out uh, the baby with the bathwater. That ritual and ritualized uh, and uh, ritualized spaces, worshipful spaces, uh, such as might be created in museums, even. Uh, uh, with different rooms exhibiting the virtues. Uh, uh, these are things to consider. Uh, it's a good imagination stimulation for ways in which I think that, as you think about to American history, where we're at at this point in time, what our challenges are, uh, could we use in public life um, uh, uh, places and rituals of confession and uh, and penance and repentance and forgiveness. Uh, certainly, for instance, like was developed in the, um, uh, in the talks in South Africa uh, when apartheid was ending, uh, the, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Very interesting work. Fitting spirit of democracy will foster like practices and rituals in public life. People they know the importance of eating together. Oh, doesn't that look like something out of ancient history now? A fitting spirit of democracy fosters practices where strangers can become friends and neighbors. That's fundamental to who we need to be. People of faith know the toxicity of lies, including self-deception, the lying to oneself, and the healing value of truth. A fitting spirit of democracy is injured by lies and is healed by the pursuit, acceptance, and consequences of truth. Um, saw a line attributed to various uh, persons on, on, uh, on the web that said, you know, the truth shall set you free, but first it's going to make you miserable. Um, and this, this, uh, uh, this cartoon here says that beautifully. People of faith know how to search for and value wisdom, uh, that they're looking for wise practice, not just one year repeated 50 times, 50 years of, of reflective experience. This graphic, by the way, comes from University of Chicago Project, uh, where they are, it's called the Wisdom Project, where they're trying to understand what wisdom is. And by the way, wisdom is not necessarily connected with age. Uh, it's not a necessary outcome of age, um, and it isn't necessarily a, a virtue which is undeveloped or even underdeveloped when it comes to younger people. 
They're a very interesting work that they're doing there. Fitting Spirit of Democracy constantly seeks better living, better decisions, knowing and learning from history, not necessarily living bigger. People of faith know that um, work that makes, repairs, and heals is sacred. The beautiful term out of Judaism, tikkun olam, uh, to heal the world, to mend the world as what human beings are to be about on this earth, kind of the extension of Adam and Eve uh, caring and uh, tilling the garden. A fitting spirit of democracy seeks to create and maintain the connections between human dignity, good work, a truly living wage, and doing good. And I think this is my final one. People of faith know work is important, so is rest, recovery, restoration. Um, Sabbath, according to biblical scholars, is about every human being uh, and their animals, in fact, being entitled to rest, which in the ancient world, rest was a, an attribute or, a, excuse me, a, a practice that only the royalty was uh, to be allowed. Uh, rest was the highest form of, of status, to be able to rest. And what Sabbath means is that every person is king or queen for a day uh, on their day of rest. So therefore, not only kings and queens should enjoy leisure, which also means enjoying the fruits of the earth, um, the fruits of the, your labor and the fruits of what uh, the, uh, the creator of creation has brought forth. All right, so priming the question pump for this week, there are you know, 24 potential contributions for people of faith to make to the spirit of democracy. What do you think about those? Which uh, do you think faith communities really know uh, and which are only a memory or a potential? Uh, what have I missed? The 24 there, I'm sure there are others. And then uh, in general, we can also spend some time, what have been the primary takeaways from our study and, uh, and by the time you view this, uh, uh, it may be that the election is over and there's something from our study that for you uh, says, uh, has something to say with the election. Um, if you'd like to further connect, and I'm going to say this also uh, in, uh, uh, in the discussion, but you want to further connect, keep some kind of connection with the Center for Religion and Public Life and the work we're trying to do there. Here's where it is on the seminary's website. Um, I hope that uh, uh, all five lessons have stimulated your imagination. And in particular, this one, there's a lot of great work that we could do as people of faith and of spiritual and moral conviction that we can be doing upstream of elected leadership and policy and legislation and the like. A lot we could be doing in terms of looking at what's in the soil, how healthy is that soil, what are we contributing to the soil that's for the good, not only of our faith group, but for the good of this, uh, this nation that we love. Thanks.